Okay, so today I want to talk about Parnell Motley and undrafted free agents, some of the more interesting signings and one of the things that really sucks and all that's coming up after the bumper. Don't be cornering me. Hold up. Time. You gotta help me with that, that corner sh**. What's up, kid folks? It's RJ Young. I am not on a step mill. Consider hitting the like and subscribe button because I upload a video every single day. It's always college football related, sports related. We have a good time. Today, I want to talk about undrafted free agent signings. It's one of the aspects of the NFL draft that I both love and loathe for reasons I'm going to get to. But let's start with the news, which is that Parnell Motley signed a contract with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers along with other guys like Michael Divinity and Zach Shackelford. If those names sound familiar, it's because Michael Divinity was at one point going to be what everybody thought Cave Lawn Chasen ended up being, first round draft pick and a great edge rusher. And then Zach Shackelford, who played center over at Texas, and Texas has its own problems with three draft picks, two, four for Oklahoma, four for Baylor, five for Texas Christian, and 14 for LSU. Now, I thought that Parnell Motley would be one of several Oklahoma players that was drafted. It turns out he, Lee Morris, Nick Basquin, three guys that we thought might have a shot, end up going undrafted. And to date, Parnell Motley is the only one of the Sooners who has received a contract. Kelly Masters, who runs a sports agency, took to Twitter to say, look, this has been an unusual year for undrafted free agents, seeing even as much as 170 fewer signings than you're used to seeing. And a lot of that, I think, has to do with the pro days that did not happen because of the state of the pandemic because we're in this thing where we don't know when we're going to have live sports again let alone when life is going to be anything like normal for most people that means that we're waiting on a vaccine of some sort which is at least a year away which means in places like los angeles and particularly state of california we're probably not going to see a whole hell of a lot of movement on the sports and concert landscape and we're already in a economic spiral with more than 26 million people in the united states filing for unemployment, which is no bueno, tossing about 12% in unemployment by the end of the year. And that's before we even take into account how much debt we're all going to be in and what kind of deficit our nation, let alone our respective states, are going to be in. Even when we got just a little bit of light in that we're reopening private businesses in and around the country, but in reopening private businesses, are we doing that too soon? Have we actually flattened the curve? We don't have enough data to tell us for sure, but people are cooped up. People need to work. People have a hard time wondering whether or not they're going to be sick. They have a very, very hard time wondering whether or not they're going to pay the mortgage on time. And you can see how those are two very bad things that you don't want to happen. But also, one needs to happen before the other, and we need to keep you alive so that you can work. But people are saying, what good is it for me to be alive if I can't work because, well, then my family suffers. Meanwhile, we're talking about guys that are going into the NFL draft that expected to be that weren't, like Parnell Motley, who are signing contracts for like $5,000 signing bonus and like $55,000 a year. It's not a whole lot of money, but also it's more money than some people are making. I mean, the medium household income for a family of four is about $50,000. Depending on where you live in the United States, that's either a decent amount of money, say Oklahoma, Alabama, Mississippi, or a paltry amount of money, say California, particularly in San Francisco, where the rent is simply too damn high. Now, I want Lee Morris to get really as much of an opportunity as anybody else because I love his story. He came from Allen, Texas. He was a walk-on at Oklahoma. He turned into the best tight end at Oklahoma ahead of Grant Calcaterra, who was a four-star recruit out of California. Fight me. Also, Grant Calcaterra is going to fight fires, so no shade to him at all because, I mean, the dude had to medically retire and was probably destined for an NFL career before he just took too many hits to the head, and now he's going to try to really help his state in a different way, which is what we can all aspire to. Now, another guy that did that that I actually interviewed on my radio show, the RJ Young Show, on the Sports Animal 97.1 FM locally, you can listen online, there's a live stream in the link below, 9 to 11 a.m. Central Standard Time, was Chris Chamberlain. Chris Chamberlain is a firefighter at Bethany, where, well, he's been doing that for a couple of years. He played in the league for a few years was an outstanding linebacker at the University of Tulsa. Now, getting back to Lee Morris, who could probably be a firefighter if that's what he wanted to be, I want to get him, see him get a shot at playing in the NFL. If it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. But the other reason why you have a hard time perhaps signing so many undrafted free agents, you don't know when you're going to see them. Nobody knows when we're going to actually get anything like football or anything like rookie camp or mini camp or any of the camps. I tried to get a couple of dudes that were drafted to come on to my radio show, do some podcasts. Also did a podcast with Ben Habern that you're going to listen to at some point. I don't know when. Ben's a really, really cool dude, works the college football playoff, talked a little bit about, you know, 
what it's like to be in that vicinity, especially in this age of oh, nobody knows what's going on. So when nobody knowing what's going on, you can understand why so many teams would be reluctant to sign undrafted free agents, except we've seen more than a dozen at some places. Elijah Riley coming out of Army, signed with Philadelphia. We saw Thaddeus Moss signed with the Washington Redskins, though many of us thought he would get drafted, though he didn't get drafted. And I think that's because of the injury issue, but he didn't really drop a pass while playing tight end over there at LSU. Then you look and you see some really interesting stuff like Jamar Smith, who gets an undrafted free agent contract with the Patriots. Jamar Smith is a quarterback, and if you didn't know this, because you're not supposed to know it, because he went to La Tech and he wasn't very good at La Tech. Then they signed Brian Lewerke, who was trash last year outside of how he played against Tulsa, and Tulsa wasn't exactly really good. They went 4-8, and eight, though the defense was really good, and if you're going to draft him based on how he played against that defense, then perhaps I could see it, because Reggie Robinson goes in the fourth round to the Dallas Cowboys, Travis Gibson goes in the fifth round to the Chicago Bears. But those are two dudes that got drafted, and they're not undrafted. So continue to look down the list of guys that end up as undrafted free agents. Seeing Tyler Huntley end up with the Baltimore Ravens goes, hmm, didn't really see that one coming. Didn't know that he fit into what they are doing. Same thing goes with, yeah, J.J. Taylor, five foot five running back coming out of Arizona. He signed an undrafted free agent contract with the Patriots, along with Khalil Tate, who signed an undrafted contract with the doggone Arizona Cardinals. Now, I don't know that Khalil Tate's going to play quarterback. I would hope he would. It seems like a bigger, taller, less talented Kyler Murray. And if that's what you're looking for, Cliff Kingsbury, who, by the way, got a supremely great bachelor pad that I'm not sure he bought. I'll bet he rented it because that thing was about $4.45 million. However, if you expect to be the Arizona Cardinals head coach for a very long time, maybe it's just an investment on, I don't know, Picking up chicks, because I, I don't see Cliff Kingsbury as the kind of dude that's getting married anytime soon, especially the lifestyle that Cliff Kingsbury chooses to live. Now, one more thing about this undrafted free agent thing where we talk about Parnell Motley being you know signed by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and really being the only guy at Oklahoma who's signed an undrafted free agent contract is Mason Font. Passed for over 13,000 yards, which is an Oklahoma State record at Pegs. Well, he's from Pegs. He did it at Locust Grove. Took the Locust Grove thing, turned it into a scholarship offer from UNT, his only Division I of the sort. After going on the camp circuit for some time. And then, yeah, plays outstanding football at UNT and beat out an Alabama transfer for the quarterback job and passed for over 12,000 yards and had a dramatic come from behind victory against UTSA, a UTSA that was coordinated defensively by Pete Golding, who is now defense coordinator at Alabama. So he's beating up on people. Plus, he went at a future number one draft pick in the Saints, is Marcus Davenport, who was terrorizing. Mason Fine in the backfield during that game, but Mason still managed to engineer what they call the drive down there in Denton, Texas. Now, the knock on Mason Fine is one that he cannot control, which is that he's short. He's five foot nine, which makes him actually a little bit taller than the average man, which is not short, but it is short in the NFL. And I just thought that if you were wanting to, you know, draft a really great quarterback, maybe you would have drafted him and you might have got him in the steal in the sixth or seventh round. That said, we could see. The Dallas Cowboys end up drafting a guy out of James Madison in the seventh round. They're going to get the kid from Mason Fine, but they also know that Mason Fine is there. And I know they know that Mason Fine is there because they signed two running backs from, yeah, Texas Christian. Darius Anderson and Sewu Alanalua, also undrafted free agents, signed with the Dallas Cowboys. I don't understand why you don't want to put Mason Fine on the payroll, at least as a good look, and give him a shot. That said, he did get some interest from the Saints. We were expecting to, but then they went ahead. And they signed James Winston to a one-year year, and it seems like that dude might be the heir apparent to Drew Brees. I don't buy into Taysom Hill as a backup for Drew Brees. I buy into Taysom Hill as a Swiss Army knife for Sean Payton to do nice things with. But I'm also not going to give my franchise to a guy that's had repeated knee surgeries. Which goes back to this whole undrafted free agent thing. If you are an injury risk, cool, I understand it. But if you're not, and you could absolutely play, I want to know what it is that NFL teams are actually looking at. Because I'm not sure that all the time they get this right. As a matter of fact, I think they're as good at it as many of us are. It's just sometimes they hit and they hit well. Sometimes they absolutely miss. Kind of like Michigan when they go and send all these dudes to the NFL but can't seem to go win championships. Speaking of undrafted free agent, Shea Patterson does not get drafted. Yikes. I'm uh, not sure what we're going to say about him in the future with the NFL, but we can say that it wasn't really a great run at Michigan. Certainly wasn't that great at Ole Miss, and we were probably all right to say that maybe that was a missed evaluation. Still, I'm excited about what football might bring, even if it is in the NFL. All right, that's it for me. If you like the videos, don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel. Please, if you frequent this channel, consider becoming a member, 99 cents a month, which is like, I don't know, 0 0.01 pennies per video that I make because I make a ton, like 30 a week, like 120 a month. 
Most creators don't even make 120 in a year. I am a psycho.